everyone, and welcome to episode 41 of the Nitty Heather podcast. My name is Heather, and I'm coming to you from Kent, Washington, where I live with my husband Tom and our Cavalier King Charles Spaniel Pepper. This is my podcast where I talk all about everything I'm working on, everything I have on my knitting needles and crochet hooks. I love to share everything I am creating. I also love to feature amazing makers, whether they are yarn dyers, pattern designers, or makers of other knitting accessories. I always love to give special shout outs to all of those people who are adding to the beauty of our fiber community. If you are a new viewer, welcome. I'm so happy you found me and I hope you enjoy yourself. And if you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. I really, truly appreciate it. If you would like to follow me, I am at Nitty Heather on Instagram and I always love seeing what everyone is posting and working on and sharing on Instagram. Everything I talk about, all of the yarn and patterns and accessories will be listed and linked in the description box below. Today is Monday, November 8th, 2021, and I have a lot to tell you about, so let's get started. Today I am wearing my Listun Varnia by Angela Hahn. I think that's how you pronounce this pattern. It was a pattern that came with one of my old, old, I did this years ago, one of my older subscription boxes, but I did use a different yarn. I used, I think, what is a discontinued DK yarn that I brought home from my granny's house one day that I took out of her stash. But it is a beautiful lacy stitch pattern. You do some increases and then work straight and then some decreases on the other side and then it is bordered by a really pretty cable pattern. I did the scarf size, but she also does have instructions to knit a bigger shawl. And I just love this color. It just is really warm wrapped around my neck, just hanging around my neck, very comfy. This was such a beautiful, fun pattern to work. The lace wasn't as challenging as it might look. It has this beautiful leaf motif. I really enjoyed this knit. Check out Listun Varnia by Angela Hahn. Today I am also wearing a pair of socks from Hypnotic Yarn. This colorway is called Seance and it was from her October 2020 Yarnable subscription box. The pattern I used was the Go Your Own Way socks by Stacy Winklepleck of Knit Picks. I chose to knit these cuff down with 15 rounds of a 2x2 rib for the cuff, a slip stitch heel flap and gusset, and a wedged I do have a little bit of happy mail to share with you this episode. First, I got some progress keepers from Vanessa, who is Nitty Witch on Etsy. Here they are. It is a pink crystal ball with a yellow flower in it, and then a really pretty white teapot with some blue detail on it. I've really discovered that I like these lever back progress keepers. They are a lot easier to put through the stitches. And then I also got some really fun Jingle Bell stitch markers for the holiday season. These I will use to mark certain sections or mark the beginning of my rounds on some of my future Christmas projects. Thank you so much, Vanessa. I absolutely love these. These are super, super beautiful. Stop by and take a look at Knitty Witch on Etsy. Next is my monthly mini subscription that I haven't showed for a long time, but I am still getting the monthly mystery mini from Donna of Crystal Skies Hand Dyed. Here is October's. And the color theme was Saffron Spice. I'm really excited to add these to my Granny Stripe blanket eventually. I think she always does such a nice job with her colors. And I definitely do see that saffron orange in all of these minis. She is continuing to do her mystery mini club every month where she chooses a different color inspiration and creates five 20 gram minis. You can get them on just about any of her bases that she offers. So it's a good club to jump in any time. Check out the monthly mystery minis club by Donna of Crystal Skies Hand Dyed on Etsy. Last, I'd like to tell you about some yarn I just received for Sockmas 2021, hosted by Natalie of the Love and Stitches podcast. This is a self-striping yarn from Mountain Mist Yarn Company, Nicole. It is called Castle at Night, and look at all these beautiful 
stripes this is gonna have. The theme this year for Natalie's Sockmas is the castles at Disney World. And so this colorway was inspired by what the castle looks like at night. All of those added pretty Christmas colors. And then she included three beautiful minis. So I think what I'm going to do is use one mini for the toes, one mini for the heels, and one mini for the cuffs. But I'm open to other suggestions. What would you do with a sock set like this that has three 20 gram minis? Check out Mountain Mist Yarn Co. on Etsy. Now on to my finished objects. My first pair of socks I have to show you is from Desert Vista Dye Works. This was my October pair of socks for her seventh annual monthly sock club. This was in the colorway Zombody DeVille, inspired by Cruella. I knit these two at a time, toe up. I used this really cute Dalmatian mini for the heels, toes, and cuffs. I did my normal wedge toe that I use for toe up where I cast on 16 stitches on each needle using Judy's Magic Cast On and increase until I get to a total 64 stitch count. I worked up the foot and leg. I did 12 rounds of a two by two rib before I used my simple stretchy bind off and then I went back and did an afterthought heel. I wanted to make sure the afterthought heel was bordered by this red stripe so I split this red stripe before I put in this heel just so that it would make it pop a little bit more and I'm really glad I did that. I think it looks really nice and that way it wouldn't get muddled with the other fun zombie speckled stripes. As you can see she's got a green, a purple, and kind of a gray zombie stripe with speckles in this colorway. I absolutely love all of her zombie colorways. And definitely this brings to mind the colors of Cruella. This is a plain vanilla sock knit two at a time, toe up with an afterthought heel using Desert Vista Dye Works Zombody DeVille. Next, I'd like to tell you about my New York socks. This was the last pattern put out by Mina Phillip, the knitting expat, as part of her Around the World in Eight Socks collection, inspired by the city of New York. Here is what they look like. And here's a little bit of a closer up look at this stitch pattern. I did do the stitch pattern across the front and I left the back of the sock plain stockinette. I did 20 rounds of the ribbing that she calls for in the pattern and exactly two repeats of the main stitch pattern following the chart down the leg. I did the German short row heel that she calls for in stockinette. I chose to do stockinette this time. And then another two repeats of the chart down the foot before I did her rounded wedge toe that she calls for. The yarn I used is from Lolo Did It, part of her Downton Abbey Upstairs and Downstairs collection. The mini was called Wonderful Things and the main color is called The Only Girl in the World. This was such a pleasure to knit. In fact, I loved every single one of the patterns from her Around the World in Eight Socks collection. I highly recommend you check it out if you haven't looked that up yet. They were all so unique, so much fun to knit up. I definitely might do some of them a second time for sure. Mina writes absolutely incredible patterns. I encourage you to check out any of her sock patterns, not just from this collection, but any of them are absolutely wonderful. These are the New York Socks by Mina Phillip, the Knitting Expat, knit up in Lolo Did It, Wonderful Things, and Only Girl in the World from her Downton Abbey collection. Next, I have a half-finished object to show you. These are my mom's birthday socks. She loves shorty socks, so I decided to knit her a pair of shorty socks for her birthday that is coming up very soon. The yarn I am using is from Hypnotic Yarn. It is called Pass the Sweet Potatoes, and I believe it was from her Yarnable subscription box in November 2019. Really pretty oranges and purples, and I love how it's kind of striping a little bit and pooling. Looks really nice. I knit this cuff down with 15 rounds of a two by two rib, and then I did a shadow wrap heel from the Socksploration pattern by Denise DeSantis, also known as Earth Tones Girl. 
and then I did 60 rounds down the foot before I did a rounded toe found in most of K the Crazy Sock Ladies patterns. This was all plain vanilla. And I did use a size one 2.25 millimeter needle for this. Normally I use size two for my socks because I have a little bit wider of a foot, but my mom's foot is a little smaller. So I did use a smaller needle and I think it turned out really nice. I actually did have her try it on before I closed up the toe just cause I wasn't quite sure. I haven't knit her very many socks. I should knit her more socks. But here is the first of her birthday socks. I did finish the heel of her second sock the other day as well. So that is coming right along. I should have this pair done no problem before her birthday. This is a plain vanilla sock using a shadow wrap heel from the Sock Exploration pattern by Denise DeSantis, knit up in Past the Sweet Potatoes by Hypnotic Yarn. My last finished object is a set of little mini baby socks that I turned into little advent ornaments for my cousin's baby. His first Christmas is coming up and I thought I wanted to do something a little bit special that he can keep forever. So I knit 25 little mini socks using the mini sock pattern by Sue Stokes of Legacy Fiber Arts. I also used leftovers I had from the Legacy Fiber Arts 2020 Christmas Advent. I will insert a picture right here to show all 25 of them together. happy to have these done. I need to get them packaged up and shipped off to them so that they can enjoy it for baby's first Christmas. I don't know if they will want to put one out every day for Advent on the tree. Eventually they can start putting treats in them for him. However they want to use it, it is completely up to them. I just hope they really enjoy it. If you haven't tried the mini sock pattern by Sue Stokes, I highly recommend you do it. It would be a great way to learn the construction of knitting socks as well if you want to become a sock knitter. Just a super simple, very basic sock pattern. And I added a crochet chain on the inside of the cuff to use as a loop so that they can hang those socks if they so choose. Check out the mini sock pattern by Sue Stokes of Legacy Fiber Arts. <laughs> Now on to my works in progress. My first work in progress I'd like to show you is my pair of socks for November for the Desert Vista Dye Works 7th Annual Monthly Sock Club. I have it in this cute Christmas bag by Lolo Did It with some really cute Christmas hippo fabric on the inside for the lining. The colorway I am using is called You're a Mean One, inspired by Mr. Grinch, of course. I'm using 40 inch chow goo red lace, which is my preferred method for two at a time. Really bright green with some white, black, and red accent stripes. Here is what the yarn looks like in the cake. I've been eyeing this colorway for a long time, so I'm really excited to work it up this month and then have it to wear next month in December for Christmas. This Christmas tree progress keeper, I believe I got from one of my advents last year. I'm not quite sure which one, but I really like it. I cast these on two at a time, toe up, and I am working these up vanilla, just plain stockinette. I will work about 25 more rounds up the foot and then I will mark for an afterthought heel. Then I will continue up with the leg and then do probably about 12 to 15 rounds of two by two rib for the cuff. It is just this colorway. I'm not using any kind of contrasting mini this month, but I really think these are so fun, so Christmassy. And I'm excited to almost be done with another year of her monthly sock club. This is a pair of plain vanilla socks, knit two at a time, toe up. I will put an afterthought heel, knit up in You're a Mean One 
by Desert Vista Dye Works. Next is my pair of socks from The Cozy Knitter. This colorway is called Bed of Roses, and I decided it was actually a little bit Christmassy with some different shades of pinks and greens, and I have it in my Mary Poppins project bag from Fangirl Fibers on Etsy. This was her April Yarn of the Month Club colorway. So I'm really motivated to finish these up. I really want to finish these before I cast on my 24 stripe advent pair of socks from her that I will begin on December 1st. I'm doing these two at a time, toe up. I did a fish lips kiss heel. Here is my cute little ice cream cone, mint chocolate chip ice cream cone progress keeper. And I'm using my Knitter's Pride Nova Platina 40 inch needles for these. Here's what this beautiful colorway looks like in the cake. I'm planning to work a little bit more up the leg. I want to get through all of the green stripes, which I am just beginning again. And then I'll probably do the cuff in this pink mini that she included that I used for the toe and heel. They won't end up being too long, but that's okay. I really want to start wearing these. This is a pair of plain vanilla socks knit two at a time, toe up with a fish lips kiss heel, knit in the colorway Bed of Roses by The Cozy Knitter. Next, I'd like to tell you about one of my fall Halloween pairs of socks that I am trying to finish as quickly as I can. This is my Witch Please sock. This colorway is called Witch Please by Knitted Wit. I have it in my Wizard of Oz sock sack by Fate's Thread. Here is the yarn in the cake, really pretty candy corn colors. And I actually switched to a cute little candy corn progress keeper that I got from Pitter Patter Polymer on Etsy. I am doing these cuff down. I did 20 rounds of a two by two rib for the cuff. I did 45 rounds down the leg and on the 46th round I started my shadow wrap heel. As you can see, I just finished my shadow wrap heel and I put these back on nine inch circulars to knit down the foot. I switched over to my 32 inch circulars to do the shadow wrap heel on magic loop, but now I'm back to my chow goo red lace nine inch circular. So now I just need to cruise down the foot. This is sock number two of this pair, so I'm almost done. I need to do about 50 rounds down the foot and then use my rounded toe to finish it off. This is a plain vanilla sock knit cuff down with a shadow wrap heel knit up in Witch Please by Knitted Wit. Next is my last pair of Halloween fall socks that I am trying to finish up. This is my Sanderson Sisters sock. This colorway is called Sanderson Sisters by Nicole of Hugh Loco on her 8020 Merino sock base. Here's what it looks like in the cake. Beautiful colors of the Sanderson Sisters from Hocus Pocus. And I have it in my Hocus Pocus bag that I just got from Molly Klein Designs on Etsy. I'm using a cute witch hat progress keeper that I just purchased from Clay Cannon on Etsy. I'm using my 32 inch Knitter's Pride Zing needles for these. And the pattern I am following is by Stacy Perry of Very Pink Knits. It's called her Toe Up Gusset Socks. So I did cast these on Toe Up and she has you do some gusset increases and then Right now I finished the little turn and closing up those heel flap stitches and now I'm just knitting in the round up the leg. I'll probably do about 30 to 40 more rounds up the leg and then probably about 15 rounds of two by two rib for the cuff. This is sock number one so I do need to quickly hurry and get sock number two done. I would love all of my fall socks to be done by the end of the month so I can spend December knitting Christmas socks. This is the Toe Up Gusset Pattern by Stacy Perry of Very Pink Knits, knit up in The Sanderson Sisters by Hugh Loco. Next up is a project I have in this adorable polka dot project bag by Sandy of By the Lakeside. 
I love this really pretty bag with a nice little tassel as the zipper pull. And it is my share pair of socks that I am working on with one of my friends from the Love and Stitches membership group. Here's what it looks like so far. My cute little pumpkin pie progress keeper is from Simply Serving on Etsy. And so what I'm doing is I am following the striping pattern that Kay Litton, the crazy sock lady, does for her share a pair of sets. My friend sent me this 50 gram skein and she kept the other 50 grams for herself. This is a one of a kind from Legacy Fiber Arts. And then I split this colorway and sent 50 grams to her. This is Knitology by Knit Crate in the colorway Ginseng. And so I'm just doing two rounds of each color, striping it down the leg. I cast on the cuff with this speckled color, and on the next sock, I will do the opposite. I will cast on and do the cuff with this solid color. So I'll kind of have opposite cuffs, heels, and toes. I do plan on knitting about five to 10 more rounds before I do a slip stitch heel flap and gusset, again, in this speckled color for this sock. This is only my first sock, so I do have a lot to go yet for this pair, but I'm not really putting a time crunch on this for me. I just kind of am working on it as I can. I am really enjoying the stripes though and how these two colors are going together. My friend and I kind of sent pictures back and forth and decided that these two colors would go nicely together that we both had out of our stashes. This is a plain vanilla sock using the striping method for Share a Pair of Socks by Kay Litton, the Crazy Sock Lady, knit up in Legacy Fiber Arts and Knitology by Knit Crate. My last pair of socks I have to show you today is my DK sleeping pair of socks following the DK weight vanilla sock pattern by Kay Litton, the Crazy Sock Lady. Here it is. My little ghost progress keeper is from Sweet Cherry on Etsy. I suppose I might need to switch it to more a Christmassy progress keeper now. I have it in my sock sack from Mrs. Brown's Bags. I love this project bag. The yarn I'm using is a DK Nylon blend from Rainier Roses. She is a local to me dyer out of Vancouver, Washington, and this colorway is so beautiful. It is called Autumn Staple. I knit down the leg and then I just finished the heel flap and gusset. I just decreased all of the gusset stitches and so now I'm back to my original stitch count and need to just continue knitting down the foot. I think I will probably do about 40 rounds down the foot for this weight of yarn and size of needles. Here's the yarn again in the cake. Such beautiful tones of green and kind of some golden brown. Just beautiful how tonal this yarn is. I absolutely love it. I'm using 40 inch Chow Goo needles. I don't have a 32 inch in a size three, so that's why I'm using 40. I could have gotten away with the 32 inch, but you can use whatever sock knitting method you prefer for this pattern. This is the DK Weight Vanilla Sock Pattern by Kay Litton, the Crazy Sock Lady, knit up in Autumn Staple by Rainier Roses Yarn Co. Next, I'd like to show you a little bit of progress I've made on my patchwork fade cowl. I have it in my sloth bag from Quilt Knit Craft on Etsy. I haven't made a ton of progress on this since I last showed it on the podcast, but I did want to show you where I am. This is the Patchwork Fade Cowl by Meredith Weed of A Lovely Blunder Knits. And it is a beautiful long, it's going to be seamed together and wrapped double around my neck. I am using the Christmas in July 30 20 gram mini skein advent from Trilogy Yarns, which was this beautiful rainbowy fade. I started with this yellow, moved into some orange, the pinks and reds, greens, and I just finished the blues and have attached the purple. She has you do a few rounds of fading between the old color and the new color before you start the next stitch pattern. She does go through quite a few fun little stitch patterns and it worked out perfectly that you kind of do each stitch pattern once in each shade of whatever color 
it worked out really nicely that she dyed this specific yarn advent for this pattern. So I am just beginning one more repeat of all the different stitch patterns using the different shades of purple. This is the lightest shade of purple. And then I will go into the darkest shade of purple by the time I finish. I'm really enjoying this knit and I am excited to hopefully finish it by the end of the year. She had you start with the provisional cast on, so I will pick these stitches back up and then Kitchener it together to make a big loop. My progress keeper is a rainbow cake from Simply Serving on Etsy. And I also am using this really pretty bead stitch marker by Bump on a Hill on Etsy to mark the beginning of my round. This is the Patchwork Fade Cowl by Meredith Weed of A Lovely Blunder Knits, knit up in the 2021 Christmas in July Advent by Trilogy Yarns. Last but not least, I wanted to show you where I am at on my Shawlography Mystery Knit Along by Stephen West. I am just about to finish Clue 1, so I am very, very far behind. But if you don't want to see any of it or you don't want to see the end of Clue 1, feel free to end this video here. Thank you so much for stopping by. I really appreciate it. But if you do want to see it here, I'm going to show it in just a second. First, I can show my bag. This is my pretty butterfly rainbow project bag by Southern Sewn by Sharon on Etsy. I thought this was a really nice big bag for such a big shawl. Like I said, I'm only on clue one. I'm just about to finish up clue one. And so here it is, ready? Three, two, one. I'm actually in the middle of a row. I did all my wedges and then I did this section of little V's that kind of offset each other. And right now I am working on the little I cord loops. I believe I've done 20 of them and then you end up with 45 when you go all the way across the row. Here it is a little further back. These I-cord loops actually are pretty fun to work up. They're a little bit tedious, but I am actually using double pointed needles to just go really quickly across the row instead of having to slip the stitches back on to the left needle. So that has been really helpful to work these a little bit quicker. I'm hoping to finish this row in the next day or two. I've seen some of the finished objects and I really do love how this shawl turned out and I have every intention of finishing it. I don't know when that will be. I'm not putting any kind of timeline, but I do have a couple progress keepers. This little pumpkin is from Pitter Patter Polymer on Etsy. And then this adorable little scarecrow is from Clay Cannon on Etsy. So here's one more look at it. Congratulations if you have finished this already. The last clue came out about a week and a half ago now. So there are a lot of finished objects starting to show up using the hashtag and I think they all have turned out so beautiful. It's just a really fun experience knitting something like this. It's almost like you're just making a beautiful work of art. Lots of new techniques that you get to try. And his tutorials are really, really good. If you ever do decide to cast this on, I highly recommend watching the tutorials that Stephen West put out to supplement this and kind of help us out as we knit this pattern. This is Shawlography by Stephen West, the 2021 Mystery Knit Along. Well, that is about all I have for you this episode. Thank you so much for spending a little bit of time with me. I really appreciate it. Please don't forget to give this video a like and consider subscribing. That would be wonderful. And as always, let me know what you are working on and any thoughts or feedback you have about the podcast. You are more than welcome to leave a comment down below or message me on Instagram. I am at Nitty Heather on Instagram and I would absolutely love to hear from you. But until next time, be well, be kind, and happy knitting. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.